A web coverage service request can be divided into three main components. So we have a service endpoint, which is in this case uh, the earthserver.ecmwf.int. And then we specify a OGC service we would like to request data from. And in this case, it's the WCS, a web coverage service. And each web coverage service also is accompanied by a version, in this case, 2.0.1. Then there are three core request types, and one of the core request types is get capabilities request. And uh, if we send off this uh, get capabilities request, we get back the capabilities document, which is a XML document that it gives general information of the web coverage service. We can also, also open up this URL in a simple web browser, and then we also get back the capabilities document. The document uh, contains, or the XML tree contains uh, different child elements. And so one is service identification, the other one is service provider, operations metadata, service metadata, and contents. If we open, service, open up service identification, we get more information what the service is about. So in this case, to um, to offer global reanalysis data of ECMWF's era interim data. Uh, the service provider child element gives us uh, information about who actually provides the service, and in this case it's the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasts. And the service was set up as part of the Earth Server 2 project. And then the um, operations metadata element uh, gives us uh, information what operations or request types are supported. And in this case, the three core requests of a, get covered, of a web coverage service are uh, supported. And the service metadata gives us a list of uh, data encodings uh, a user can request data from the service. So per default, it's, um, the data is returned in GML, XML, but a user can also request data as CSV, as JSON, as NetCDF, or as image formats such as PNG or JPEG. And uh, the child element uh, content, uh, contents uh, gives us an overview of all the data sets that is available. So fire weather index data, or here we have ozone from the Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service, or um, as an example, precipitation from the ERA interim reanalysis data. If we then get back uh, to Postman, we can also request uh, a describe coverage. This is the second core request type from a WCS. And describe coverage uh, is accompanied by an optional parameter because uh, in this way we actually want to get more information about a specific coverage, and so we have to add coverage ID and the ID we're interested in to our request. So in this case, we're interested in the coverage temp2m, which is two meter air temperature. And if we then send off this request, we get back the coverage description document that contains the metadata of a specific data set encoded in XML. If we open up this uh, request uh, in a simple web browser. We also get back the coverage description document and then information, more information about the coverage. So we see that it's a three-dimensional coverage um, which has the axis latitude, longitude and ANSI, which is time. Um, the units are in degrees and in days and uh, the bounding box indicate that um, it's a global coverage going from 1978 to uh, 2015, 30, uh, no, to, um, to 12th of uh, January 2016. Um, and then we also get uh, the information about the spatial and temporal uh, resolution. So the spatial resolution is 0 0.5 degrees and the temporal resolution is 0 0.25 um, of one day, which means it's six hourly values. And the third core request type of a web coverage service is the get coverage request, which actually um, helps us to retrieve the actual data. So we also, for a get coverage request, 
we also indicate the coverage we actually want to get data from and uh, then we can subset each axis um, the coverage um, contains. So basically if we're interested as an example, if we would like to retrieve a time series for London for 2014, we can basically subset the latitude and longitude for the specific point information for London and then we can subset the time axis um, for the period 2014, so 1st of January 2014 to 31st of December 2014. And if we then send back, uh, we send off this request, we get um, basically an XML document with um, the data um, uh, that contains the data. If we open up, uh, so we can open up um, the same URL again in a web browser. And then we uh, get back uh, the data um, in the XML document. So the two meter air temperature in Kelvin for each um, time information. But uh, so per default, we get the data back in an XML document, but we can also specify the format parameter. And then, for example, as a time series, it makes maybe more sense to retrieve the data as a CSV. Um, because then we can directly integrate it into a Python routine and if we send off this request we get basically the 2 meter air temperature data in Kelvin back as a CSV. Another example is to retrieve the, um, a, a global coverage uh, of 2 meter air temperature for um, uh, 15th of August 2003 as a PNG. And for this, we actually don't want to subset the latitude and longitude information, but we only want to subset the time information and the format we request is the PNG. And then if we request, if we send off this request, we see um, actually a, a PNG in, in black and white. If we want to color the image, um, we would still need to apply a color scheme on the fly to actually retrieve a colored uh, PNG. Another example is also to retrieve a three-dimensional uh, uh, coverage in NetCDF, for example. So um, if we would like to get a three-dimensional coverage of two meter air temperature for August 2003 for Europe, we specify a subset, for, uh, uh, we specify the time range um, for, for August 2003 then we subset the latitude uh, information for, for Europe and the same we also do for the longitude information. So the longitude is going from minus 30 to 65. And as we want to retrieve the data in a net CDF, we also add a format parameter and we say we would like to get the information as net CDF. And if we then copy paste the URL, open up in a web browser and request or send off the request, we basically download the net CDF and then we can open up the net CDF in Panoply which is a software that can easily visualize net CDF data and we can open up just a downloaded net CDF file and we see that it contains all the information so the latitude and longitude axis and also the time axis um, and the field is actually the two-dimensional um, data and we see that we have for Europe the two meter air temperature for August uh, for each time step so six hourly values from 1st of um, August 2003 to 31st of August 2003 and then we can also 
retrieve um, the data for different time steps.